so this is a paper joint with uh, Maurizio Bussola from World Bank and Fabian uh, Herzl, uh, with a PhD student at the Paris School of Economics. And uh, so this is an empirical paper uh, in which we, we, we pro produce, we provide some estimates of inequality opportunity in uh, uh, some South Asian countries, okay? So, uh, motivation. Uh, so just to say one thing on this. So there are three main, uh, let's say, uh, main reasons one can be interested in uh, inequality opportunity. One is uh, purely normative. Uh, you know, there was a big discussion in the 90s and uh, uh, even before among uh, social, uh, among philosophers, political philosophers, and normative economists about uh, what is social justice and why we should move when thinking about social justice from the space of achievements to the space of opportunities. So from an, uh, let's say, a welfaristic approach to a non-welfaristic approach in which the process by which a given distribution is obtained is relevant. So this is an intrinsic uh, reason, if you want, uh, why equality opportunities are fair. The other is instrumental, okay? Equality opportunity is interesting because in a great opportunity can be a barrier to economic growth. There have been different ways in which this has been uh, specified and declined. There are different, different arguments. In a great opportunity can, uh, can go against uh, a good, uh, an efficient allocation of talents, can be against uh, the good incentives in a, a market economy. Uh, but, you know. And then there is also another argument which is uh, uh, that in a great opportunity the great opportunity is not uh, only the, the, the conception that is uh, proposed by philosophers or economists, but is the conception that is very popular among normal citizens, okay? So we should take into account this. And so, uh, now, the, the real question is, uh, now, are all these uh, arguments valid uh, for uh, poor, I mean, non-rich, non-Western countries? I say that because most of the literature, uh, both the... the, the, the um, the normative literature and also the literature which uh, is uh, trying to, to, to elicit uh, the conception of justice of individuals is based on most of it on Western rich countries. So the problem is, uh, is this relevant for poor countries? Our answer is yes. Okay. I, don't <laughs> I don't have time here to say why, but how in, the, in the paper we discuss this. Okay? So I, I think it should be discussed. Okay. Why? Uh, because some uh, important economists as as, as uh, uh, you know pose the, 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 this, this important question: Why we should be interested in inequality opportunity in a country where there is a, 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 an increase, a, an enormous level of poverty and uh, extreme poverty? Why we should be interested in measuring inequality opportunity and not just uh, uh, deprivation and the poverty and the total inequality? So. There are some arguments. I think these, these issues should be addressed. Yesterday there was a session here, I think here, in which this thing was discussed. Now this is the region we, we study, and those are the countries. Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. Now I try to, to speed up the, the, the presentation. Now what we do, we, so the, <coughs> the main effort here was uh, to, to, to work on the data, okay, to obtain the, the estimates, and to obtain comparable estimates, so comparable across countries. Then, uh, to capture trends, we, we uh, estimate the great opportunity across birth cohort, okay, in different countries. And then we, we try to understand what is the contribution of the different circumstances to inequality opportunity by sharply decomposition. And uh, we try to uh, exploit the coherent people to, 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 to infer the uh, parental uh, characteristics, uh, and we discuss uh, the coincident bias in this uh, in this context. Okay, now um, uh, a preview of the results. Uh, the cohort basis analysis reveals trends uh, which are hidden in cross-section analysis. So you will see that this is very clear. Uh, we basically measure inequality opportunity into two dimensions: education and the consumption. We explore also the income, but we, at the end we, we prefer the household consumption. So education and household consumption. And uh, what are the, the basic results? That there is an a reduction of inequality opportunity in years of education in almost all the countries. 
and uh, with an heterogeneity in, in improvements and levels, uh, there is not a clear in, uh, uh, improvement in a great opportunity for consumption. Okay? And uh, our conclusion, I mean, a provision conclusion for the coercing data is that the coercing data are only representative for a narrow age group of general population. If you want to uh, uh, apply you know, the conclusion you have for the coercing data to the full population, there are really big differences. So you, you, you can't really do that. I mean, there is, there is big bias. We, we try to quantify that. I will not present much here, but we do the, in the paper. So we, we already have seen the model of great opportunity by Chico, so I, I, I go, go quick here. And uh, so what we do, we do here a parametric, so we just measure in equate opportunity in the ex-ante approach. We do both a parametric, uh, which for the continuous variable will be a linear model, and um, we also have here some uh, uh, dichotomous variable, which is literacy, and there we use uh, uh, probit analysis, and for the, 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 the measure of inequality, we use the Gini for the, the continuous and the similarity for the binary variables, okay? Uh, and we compare the, 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 the results we have with the two different approaches, the parametric and the machine learning. I will show not all the results we have, but I mean, mo most of it. Uh, now, uh, these are the, the, all the surveys we use, okay? for all the countries. So I'm not going to, and for all the countries we have, for most of the countries we have different years here, okay, of the same survey. So for the cohort analysis what we do, we pull together all the surveys, okay, and then we identify different cohorts on an interval of five to ten years, okay, and then we follow those cohorts. So we are able to, uh, to see the trend. Basically we do that for the educational uh, uh, variable. Uh, that that it's, it's easier because for the education you don't have a life cycle effect that you have for the for the consumption for the income. Okay, so the the the, the analysis is easier. Uh, okay, so uh, the 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 outcomes for the individual level you have here so education and literacy. Uh, you also have individual uh, level of income, but we will not show these results. At the household level, you have uh, consumption per capita for all countries. You have income per capita. And uh, of course, you know, by taking the household level, you underestimate the gender dimension. Uh, and uh, so we take into account that when we, 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 we measure the, the, the contribution of uh, circumstances to inequality opportunity. As for the circumstances, what do we have? We have gender, as I said, but which is underestimated given that uh, for the consumption we use a household level consumption. We have uh, urbanity of residence as a proxy of urbanity of birth. We have geographical region of residence uh, as a proxy for region of birth. Now we have some statistics to see how big is uh, uh, the migration from one, from one region to the other. It's not that big, so our results we are quite robust in that, in that sense. Uh, then we have a, a variable which, which we call demographic group, I will show you later. And, uh, and then uh, we have uh, a parental education. Now, for most of the countries we have uh, gender, urbanity, geographical region, demographic group. For some countries, four countries uh, uh, specifically, we have also parental education, okay? So we have basically two different set of circumstances, a limited one and an extended one, okay? And uh, uh, so the extended one, we have parental education. And then we try to measure in a great opportunity with the extended circumstances, also for the countries for which that information is not present in the survey by using co-resident data, okay? So uh, let me see so this. So this is the basically, uh, for each uh, uh, circumstance you have the country for which the circumstance is available in the data. And here, for the parental education, you have the four countries for, for which the parental education is in the survey, which are Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, and Nepal. And these are the other countries, so Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka, for which only the coincidence uh, analysis will allow you us to, 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 to use uh, the, co the, the, the parental education uh, survey. So let me just spend uh, a few words here. So the demographic group variable is a, is, is a composite variable 
variable, which is also different from country to country. Okay, so here there was a kind of compromise. Okay, uh, which is uh, in, in the words of Chico is certainly arbit arbitrary, but you know arbitrary doesn't mean that it cannot be uh, justified in uh, uh, with the reasoning. Then the, the, the point is that the reasoning should be compelling, it should be, uh, in, a, in a sense, uh, convincing. Huh? Uh, so what we have basically here, we have a, a, a variable which takes very different uh, meanings in different countries. So for instance, in India you have uh, a, a, a variable with six categories in which you mix the caste and uh, the, 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 the religion. And uh, for the, uh, the Pakistan, you have a, a, a variable which uh, basically depends on the uh, language, for Sri Lanka, the ethnicity. So this comes from the specificity of each country. Okay? So the compromise solution we have is that we have a model with the same number of circumstances, so covariates, but that covariate, one of those covariates, so what we call uh, demographic group, has very different meanings for the different countries, okay? reflecting the different social st and cultural structure of the different countries. That was, in, in a sense, you know, the compromise solution we, we had. And, uh, okay, uh, let, me so, let me show you the first results. So, first of all, we start with education, then we go to consumption. Education. This is uh, the full inequality. Sorry, the picture is not really focused, but anyway. So this is uh, the total inequality in education. This is inequality in years of education. So the Gini of the years of education. As you, as you expect, the values are very high. You know, the years of education is, a, is, a, is a, a, a distribution with a few values. So it's very easy that the, 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 the Gini increases. And you have a, a, a clear decreasing trend uh, for all the countries. Here are the birth cohort, okay? So we identify the trend because we have the different birth cohort. So from those born in the 60s to those born in the second part of the 90s, okay? So for each birth cohort, you have uh, inequality in the years of education. And you have that uh, the inequality uh, decreases for all the countries, okay? And uh, in a sense, uh, this is confirmed when we look at the portion of inequality in education, which is explained by circumstances. So also in equality of opportunity in education, has been decreasing for all the countries, uh, from the oldest to the youngest cohort. Okay, so there is a decreasing trend. Is the strongest the decrease in some countries like uh, Bangladesh and Bhutan, and here you have also India, and less uh, pronunciated in some countries like uh, Sri Lanka and uh, and Nepal. But the, the decreasing trend is evident everywhere. Now, this is uh, with the limited the circumstances, okay? So we take everything but the parental background. If we add the parental background, and uh, here for all the countries, so the coincident sample, you see here the, the triangle is uh, uh, in equal opportunity adding the parental background. The circle is in equal opportunity without the parental background. You, as you expect, in equal opportunity increase when you increase the circumstances increase, but increases of a, uh, of a big amount in most of the countries. And you can appreciate, you know, where the parental education plays a big role uh, in, in the different countries. And this is also true when we do for the non coincident data. So for the, the few countries, which are Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, and Nepal, for which we have parental uh, education information in the survey. So we don't have to resort to, uh, to uh, coincident data. Okay? Now, uh, if instead of taking the cohort, we had taken uh, just you know, the cross-section, so to see what is the inequality of opportunity in the different years in which the, 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 the country has been observed, we wouldn't observe that decreasing trend, okay? Uh, so, so, yeah, that says, says something to our way to, 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 to measure the, the trend. And, uh, and uh, as I said, for the education, the, the working with the age groups is quite safe, you know, because uh, for income and consumption is as more complicated, so you have to decompose the life cycle and the cost effect so is it's more complicated, but... Uh, uh, can you tell me? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was expecting something. <laughs> uh, literacy share is 
consistent with what we saw with education. Okay, so it's an increasing trend, and also the the uh, dissimilarity index says the same thing. So I will not spend time here. So le let's go to the consumption. So here you have uh, the total inequality in consumption. Okay, for the different countries. So we we start from uh, uh, let's say let's look at Bangladesh from the oldest cohort 60 to the youngest cohort 90s okay and you see that there is a decrease in, in, in total inequality in consumption so this decrease is uh, common to almost all the countries we observe so for different cohorts uh, you have uh, an in, uh, inequality decreasing trend in uh, in the in the in the in the in the four, for the four cohorts we observe okay and uh, when we look at the uh, portion of inequality that is, that is explained by circumstances, so inequality opportunity, uh, this trend is confirmed in some countries. It's not that clear in, uh, in some other countries. But one thing which is I, I find also interesting uh, here, if you if you compare the previous uh, slide with the, 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 the second one, is that the ranking of countries in terms of inequality and the ranking of countries in terms of inequality opportunity is not the same. It's not the same at all. Here you see that uh, uh, India is uh, the uh, country with the lowest inequality in consumption and uh, is among the countries with the highest inequality opportunity. Okay? And uh, this is also true for Afghanistan. It's among the countries with the lowest inequality, but among the countries with the highest inequality of opportunity. So the countries, the 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 the, the, the rank is changed quite differently, and uh, so it changed the the ranks of the countries. It changed the trend uh, uh, over the over the 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 the, the cohort. Okay, these are the the results I, I summarize here, and uh, mm, yeah. Um, let me let me go. So the contribution of circumstances uh, to inequality opportunity, uh, first education and then uh, uh, consumption. For education, you see that uh, uh, you have uh, the subregion, the region, and urban, which is uh, which all 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 together is basically the location of individuals plays uh, the biggest role. So explain most of it. So most of the inequality opportunity we observe with this data is uh, the is due to this uh, you know the, the location of individuals. So subregional region and the urban. Here we don't have the uh, we don't have the uh, parental uh, background okay because this is the is the the, the, the the common set of circumstances common to all the countries. And uh, uh, and we have a uh, uh, a smaller role of the of the gender. What is important is that uh, when you uh, you go from the oldest uh, cohort to the youngest cohort, yeah, uh, you have a decrease in the role of gender. You have an increase in the role of the location of the region. So the regional inequality is basically is increasing uh, uh, in explaining opportunity inequality uh, across cohort mo in most of the countries. Uh, what about the consumption? For the consumption. Uh, you have again the same uh, results in terms of magnitude of the location uh, variables with respect to the rest, but you don't have uh, that clear trend in the, in the increasing role of the location that you had for the education and stuff. Uh, okay, I'll, uh, um, I will. The last thing I want to show is the relationship between total inequality and inequality opportunity. Now. We we also seen uh, I think yesterday some graphs in which we we plot, we, we plot total inequality and inequality opportunity. If we do it with uh, education, we have uh, what we expect. Now we, we've seen uh, many of these graphs in uh, in the literature. So there is an increasing uh, relationship between uh, total inequality and relative inequality opportunity. Okay, so those countries in which there is higher inequality are also those countries in which the portion inequality explained by circumstances is increasing. And uh, if you do it with consumption, we don't have any evidence of that. Okay, so we just have, a, yeah, we don't have a, 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 any. Well, this is just a correlation, but is we don't have any any kind of correlation. And uh, okay, I think I will uh, stop here. It's zero. Yeah, thank you, Gabriela. <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs>